Sox post game show live from Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You can follow the show on Twitter at CHGO underscore White Sox alongside me. It's Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at Eckernwall23 as our CHGO White Sox community leader. We are coming to you live. And you better like the video because of this. After a White Sox win, 7-6 to six in controversial fashion. Correct. How you feeling? I'm feeling good about the win because they came back from multiple times being down where I was thinking... First time I went down, I was like, all right, this is cash. This is game over. Dylan Cease leaves with the lead, and then uh, subsequently it gets taken back really quickly from a pitcher. I believe that it had a, has had a good year in Keenan Middleton. And then, you know, uh, you get the Aaron Bummer coming in to relieve Groot Santos. He gives up the lead, of course, and then the White Sox come back. But the ending, amazing. Three runs in the bottom of the eighth. And that slide by Elvis Andres, I thought he was in initially. Seeing the replay, he was, of course, out. But then, violation. Uh, catcher violation where he didn't give the runner in the path to touch home plate completely, even though I thought he gave him a path. I thought the rule was applied poorly, but it is the rule, so we'll take it. Yes. Yes, right. I mean, at the end of the day, they're not overturning this. This is a White Sox win, and they were 12 games under five hundred. Now they're 11 games under 500. Here we go. That's moving on up. Only four and a half games back. Let's go. <laughs> Ugh, bad. Uh, Tomorrow when they lose, we'll be back where we're comfortable at. Five and a half games. Twins lost again. Uh, so now the leader of the American League Central is two games under 500. <laughs> this is sad. Sad, 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 Division. Uh, both the American League East leader, Tampa Bay Rays, and American League Central leaders, Minnesota Twins, have lost three games straight, Herb. Struggling. And uh, if the White Sox win tomorrow, the American League West leaders would lose two games in a row. But that's true. Um, one of those teams is 51-25, and 25, and the other one is 36-38. <laughs> and, you know, and whoever wins those divisions, they're both going to the playoffs. And I believe if you win, don't you host the playoff series versus one of the wild cards? Yes. So you're going to be playing a team, more than likely, the AL Central champion that's got a better record than you at the crib. Hey, just like uh, the Seattle Seahawks and, and Marshawn Lynch, you know, <laughs> told all of New Orleans to hold something. Um, even the Red Sox, too, who are beating up on the Twinkies. They're winners of six straight. Coming into uh, town this weekend. They'd be the leader of the American League Central. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're at the bottom of the American League East with the 39-35 and 35 record with a six-game win streak. Insane. Uh, yeah, you know, the Sox have been, quote-unquote, screwed so many times. A lot of that is just self-screwing. However, it's nice to catch a break. It's As, as Cody, who's sitting right over there, says, uh, quoting Kevin Malone from The Office, it's nice to win one. Regardless of the rule, I think the rule is, you know, was put in place for good reason because Buster Posey is such a phenomenal player, um, and it was in place uh, put in place in 2013, the offseason 2013, uh, to help protect players. But no one was at risk at all in this play, so why apply it? I don't know, and I think if, even if they call it like uh, the call on the field stands, I think most White Sox fans are like, okay, cool, let's go to the let's go to the top of the ninth and. Uh, battle and see what we can do in the bottom of the ninth for our portion uh, if we can hold them right there so I don't think any White Sox fan in their right mind thought it was going to be a violation Steven brought it up a little bit and he's like hey wasn't he on the plate that whole time would that be a interference and we were like "Mm, probably not they called him out and then when they called him in violation I think everybody at the stadium was in shock and Exuberant! It was a great time because the White Sox, as you said, have been screwed so many times and so many calls have gone against them. And in some of them, it's all of their own making. But finally, some break happens. And, hey, I talked smack about the kid before the game. Zach Remillard came through again late in the game. Maybe he just come in, come in late in the game because that's where his hits have been coming in. Late in the game where the game is on the, hanging in the balance with his game-tying hit in Friday and game-winning hit on Friday, and now the game-winning hit tonight versus the Texas Rangers. So good job, Zach Rimmelard, with a clutch single to win this game for the White Sox. Absolutely, coming through. Um, 
and let's go to the actual just play too. Um, why not give people the 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 photo of uh, the the play? Um, why don't you go to the, the other one first, uh, Stephen? Um, do you have the other one I sent you? <laughs> all right, it's all good. So all I was just trying. It's fine. Don't worry about it. The, the, these are these work. Um, so as you can see, this is right before Heim catches the ball, and I guess the contention is his foot's on the plate. Yes. Right. So. Regardless that there is a lane for Andrews to slide in, which he ended up doing, and they I almost beat it. It's it seems like they're not saying he was safe. No, um, it was a great throw by Jankowski. Um, but then Stephen, if you want to go to the next picture, um, again, you, you can. There was another angle too where you can kind of see Elvis. It seems like he's kind of forced to slide to the outside part of the plate, and that might so, be because that bat's right there. And maybe because of the foot's there, too. But he wouldn't slide to where the foot's at, which is at the, the crown, the top of the base of home plate. He would f slide to where he did, where Jonah Heim gave him the actual lane to slide to. So that's what I was giving. It's like, he's giving him a lane. He's giving him a decent amount of the plate. But, yes, as Stephen points out, that Jonah Heim right there, if you see the picture on your screen right now, we're showing, like, a couple frames before Elvis gets down – completely on his slide. Jonah Heim has his right foot on home plate at that point. I think that was the bone of contention with the guys in New York reviewing the play, that if he had his foot there or didn't have his foot there before the ball arrived and then puts his foot on the bag while, the, while he has possession of the ball, I think everything's all good. I think you can even block the plate at that point once you have the ball. But since he had his foot on the plate – before the ball arrived, I think that was where the people in New York are like, yeah, that is an interference, even though I disagree with it. Because if it happened on the other side, we would be here talking about it and saying, the ump screwed us. Right. And I, I don't, I, I wouldn't be upset if a Ranger fan out there felt screwed. And, and most, you know, Ranger fans probably do tonight. Um, even though, hey, your team is in first place. Relax. Um, there's 162 games. Get, get, I, be charitable. Yes. Give us one. Um, you want to flash that rule, Stephen? And I'll, I'll read it out. And then uh, why don't you check Slack for me, too? Because uh, Vinny sent a message. Uh, the catcher is not permitted to block the runner's path to the plate unless he is in possession of the ball. Though blocking the plate of the uh, blocking the path of the runner is legitimate attempt to receive a throw is not considered a violation. So if Heim was trying to catch the ball and you know had his foot on the plate, then it would be fine. Um, It'd yeah. be fine, but because Jankowski threw too much of a rope, truly, mm -hmm. it was just on target. Heim didn't have to move, and he was blocking the plate because, again, uh, just you know, his foot was on it the entire time before he even caught it. So I would just um, want them to use common sense in that regard, like not a letter to the letter to the law rule. Just use common sense. Hey, okay, yes, technically he was in violation of what our rule is but did that prevent the runner from sliding home did he give the runner no path to slide home no he was good he was fine i think it was a you know good pass by jankowski great catch by heim great slide by elvis everybody did their jobs right but then this technicality gets the white Sox the extra run which I'll take. Hey, and look at that. Zach Remiller, when he swings a bat, he can actually uh, do some damage, uh, weirdly enough. Maybe he shouldn't bunt. Oh, my God, he did it again. Of course he did. <laughs> they want him to bunt. <laughs> he's, he's a professional. He can bunt. That's all. That, that, if you can bunt, you're a professional baseball player. Everyone should go into the 90-mile-per-hour batting cage at your local batting cage and just start laying down bunts, film it, send it to Pedro Gafal. I bet his email is just pedro at whitesocks.com. Um, and just be like, hey, hear me laying down some bunts. And I, I bet you at least start off in, you know, low A, right? Yeah. I mean, you can get down a bunt. That's really important in Major League Baseball in 2023. Um, That's what everybody does. He did a great job, too. I, I think he ended up scoring, right? Or at least advancing to third. Uh, I just remember him flying around the bases because he was on uh, on the bases twice. Um, Remillard, yeah, yeah. There was a single to right field in Rem or center field, and Remillard went from first to third on that. Benny. Yeah. And then uh, Vaughn ended up grounding out to third. Um, and scoring and, him. And scoring Remillard. Um, and we did see T.A., um, which I thought was surprising. We also saw Luis Robert Jr. Uh, were you surprised by 
TA's pinch hit appearance in the eighth, uh, getting a productive out to the right side and advancing uh, runners. And then uh, Robert coming in as a defensive replacement for Gavin Sheets and then forcing Clint Frazier over to right field. Not really TA because uh, Pedro talked to him and said uh, he might even play on Wednesday, which he, I mean, probably will. Now uh, my rule or my uh, hope that he would get an extra day as a rest on Wednesday because of the off day on Thursday will not be going because of Timmy getting in tonight. I would assume if you get in tonight in a clutch situation in the eighth inning, you're going to play tomorrow night where versus the uh, Texas Rangers. Here's Sean. I don't know where you went, but he's but he's back. Um, but for Luis Robert, very surprised that he got an off day. Pedro spoke about it. He had started 20 games in a row without a break. And he's only, what, like 20-plus games away from his career high in season games. And so I was thinking he's getting a break and a full day's break. But as you know with Pedro Grafal, he doesn't do that too often. You get a day off, you still got to be ready to hit. You got to be ready to come in as a defensive replacement. In that case, for Luis Robert, I think, came in the seventh inning for Gavin Sheets, which actually he came in for Frazier, who moved in for Gavin Sheets' right field. Made a couple plays. Walked, scored a run. Luis Robert contributing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, then somebody and put it, I think it was uh, Jordan Lazowski put it, it's like, you don't realize that Luis Robert's not in center until he's not in center. Because you saw a couple tough plays from Clint Frazier because I, I don't think hate, he understands I mean, the, the swirling winds that happen in center field at a uh, guaranteed rate field as yet. And Luis Robert is uh, accustomed to it, uh, you know, as he's been here for four years. He didn't make any awful and, plays. I mean, he looked rough in his first catch. But he made it. I mean, yeah, that's the result of it, but he looked awful. Right. I know. I mean, hey, you know, it it, it could have been even the shadows, too. I mean, sometimes you set out in left field bleachers and you could just see that sun completely peering over Mm -hmm. uh, the top of the stadium. I'll give him a little bit of the break. uh, break. I thought his actual play uh, on the ball that was hit over him by Seager was fairly slick. I mean, Jankowski wasn't fooled by it, um, but just the ability to grab that one handed Mm -hmm. uh, and barehanded um, and his arm as well um is clearly respected especially oh. after uh throwing that guy out in la right definitely has a right fielder's field. arm um so yeah i mean th- there are some positives clint frazier but just like most white Sox players uh the bat really doesn't deliver uh, a ton um the white Sox in the ways that, that they scored um it was got off to a, a blast uh with our guy baloney's guy uh, Aloy Jimenez, homer to right center, uh, scoring Andrew Vaughn. Um, and then Dylan Cease was really great tonight. Um, did give up two earned runs, but we'll talk about his results a little bit later. Um, he did give up a homer to Adelis Garcia, and on that Seager double to center, Jankowski scored. Um, but then Elvis Andres kind of had a revenge game. Yeah, he uh, did. Andres homered to left field off of Ivaldi, and then uh, Vaughn, uh, Grounding out to third, scored Remillard. Um, but then later in the game, as you mentioned, uh, Andrew's single to right, tied the game up, and then Andrew scored. Uh, so, click to pick, Elvis Andrews? No one had him. No. So, But, I mean, uh, no, but that would be the way that he, he would be the guy, right? He would technically. But Not out of our three. Like, if, if we yeah. had to give it to a guy. Yeah, he would be the guy. His hair was a little tough, though. Um, but, yes, I yeah. would give it to him. To not turn the double play where, you know, just yeah. kind of tailor-made slow chopper and just. Cruz Santos yeah. pitched over it, though. Fifth, his his uh, star pitcher pitched over it in that inning, and then Cruz Santos came back out for the next inning and didn't have it as much, but still got the job done. Well, left the game with a two-run lead, and then Aaron Bummer subsequently gave it up quickly. Yeah. And guess who got the win? I'll tell you what, Aaron Bummer, 3-1 and one in the season. <laughs> what are y'all talking about? <laughs> what a 70 year old. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> someone was like, hey, uh, Bummer came in, so immediately bet uh, the, the Rangers' money line and the over. Um, money line didn't hit, but the over did. Yeah, I guarantee um, y'all yelling about Aaron Bummer. He's like, what are you guys talking about? He's looking at the stats. He's like, I'm 3-1. I, I got the win. Um, I, give up, I got a strikeout, zero in runs. I did my job. I bring Shut up, up guys. <laughs> Elvis Andrews because we were about to be joined by Vinny Duber, but um, with his home run, his single to score Luis Robert Jr., and uh, him scoring the game-winning run as well, uh, why not go to the locker room and hear from Elvis Andrews post-game and uh, especially about the final play and the slide. You see, what did you think at the moment when, you know, coming home there? I mean, I, you know, I thought it was going to be a very close play. Uh, for sure, you know, those plays, you never know, you know, what's going to happen. So I know towards the end, you know, I was able to 
talked to the third base umpire James, uh, and he kind of told me that one of the reasons was like, you know, he was kind of in violation. He was pretty much on top of the play the whole time. So, uh, kind of hoping that kind of help us, you know, in a way. But you know, very very close play, and you know, very glad they went away. I just, you know, I mean, you you had a great deal of success, great deal of fame in Texas. Does it mean anything to get it against your own team, or is it more just helping this team you're on now? No, nah, it's all about helping. Uh, I have a lot of great memories there, but you know, I'm, I'm very good at turning the page and staying in the present. So it's more about us. It's more about you know how resilient we've been. Uh, we know that you know we haven't we haven't played our maximum potential, but you know we still compete, man, and that's what it's all about. We you know something that we talk every single day. It's a lot of it's a lot of season left. It's a lot of games ahead of us. So you know knowing and, and believing that the best is yet to come. So you know very. Uh, you know, huge uh, team win for us. What was your approach in the at-bat to tie the game with the, the two-run single? Yeah, no, I mean, I was I was trying to stay uh, inside the ball, uh, especially in the previous at-bat. It threw me a lot of breaking balls. Uh, so, you know, in my head, I was trying to just stay the other way, you know, stay inside the ball and, and you know, let the ball travel, especially, you know, I had a huge hole in the right side. So, you know, I was able to, you know, I, stick, I was able to stick to my plan and, and, and get the hit in, in that situation. You talked about the belief that you guys have in turning this thing around. What can a game like this, a win like this, kind of do to, to, to spark some momentum? Oh, it's huge, uh, especially, you know, against a team like the Rangers. I mean, they're, for me, you know, top three team in the league, you know, offensively and defensively and, you know, pitching-wise. So, you know, we're sticking there. We're still, you know, we're still hanging. We're still uh, bottling. Uh, and, and, and that's what you need, uh, especially, you know, like you're not 100% uh, happy with, you know, the way we're playing uh, as a team. So, you know, huge win. And, and, and like you mentioned, you know, hopefully it's, you know, it's that win for us to, you know, just get in the right track. I mean, it's pretty incredible. 11 games under 500, just four and a half games back in the division lead. Have you ever seen division like this kind of play out the way it is right now? Not really. I think that's the first time, but, you know, very happy. You know, <laughs> it is that way. Uh, and that's something that we talk, and that's something that I try to transmit to to the to the guys. Uh, you know, in baseball, you have to be able to have short memory. You cannot stick to the past. You cannot stick to the last week. You cannot stick to the last day, uh, the previous day. So for us, it's you know looking ahead. It's only five and a half, and you know over seventy games ahead. So as long as we believe it, we know we have the talent to do it. So it's, it's about sticking, you know, as a team and, and pulling the right way. What would you say about what Remillard has done? Deck. Oh, like, unbelievable, yeah. man. Uh, I kid, I mean, I was able to play a few games in AAA and I loved, you know, how, you know, the way he played, the way he approached the game. Uh, always grinding, always hustling. Uh, and, and, and that's what we need. That's what we need, that type of energy. You know, I think that everybody's feeding, you know, from that, from those guys' energy. And, and you know, he's been doing an amazing job, you know, replacing, you know, uh, the guys that are not, you know, playing right now. What do you think of Dylan tonight? Unbelievable. I feel that, you know, the last few stars, he's been able to get the feeling, especially from the slider. Uh, you see a lot of swinging and knees, and when you see that, that's when you know his, you know, stuff is very effective. So, I mean, we know he's going to he's gonna have a terrific, uh, terrific year anyway, but, you know, very happy. You know, we need those guys, you know, same with the rest of the starting to the staff. You're a veteran. You mentioned kind of the things that you've been saying to the guys. What has Pedro been like, and what has his message been as you guys are trying to kind of work your way back out of that early hole? No, pretty much the same. I mean, you know, believing, believing in the culture, believing in, you know, that, that we're going to do it. You know, it's, it's easy said than done, but, you know, as long as you're positive and, and you bring the right energy every single day, uh, you know, it's like a dominoes effect. So, I mean, Pedro has been amazing, uh, you know, the communication, taking care of the guy. Uh, you know, for the first, you know, first time as a manager, you know, it's not that easy as people think. But I, you know, I feel that, you know, I have a few uh, first-time manager, and I mean, I've, so far he's been doing a really great job. What's that uh, wave, wave of motion like going from alcohol to doing the, the go ahead, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, at the beginning I was very upset. Usually I always kind of score in those plays. I was really sad when. He did not call, you know, save, but and then when he, you know, when they switched that call, I mean, I think everybody saw it. I would start jumping like a little kid in the dugout, and everybody uh, was the same way, you know. I feel that, you know, games like this is, is what you need as a team. You know, it kind of sparked that energy that, 
sometimes, you know, when you're not winning, it kind of goes away. So, you know, hopefully we can, you know, let this game tonight uh, help us moving forward and, you know, get back on the winning streak. Like you were saying, this is a big win. Those guys, those guys can hit. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're the best offense for a reason. And, and we knew coming into the series, we have to score. So I think that, you know, every situation, everything happened for a reason. I think the series like this, uh, I mean, it is helping us offensively already because we are competing. And when you're competing to the best, kind of raise your level and, and, and let you know how good actually you guys, we, we can be as a team. So, I mean, so far, great games. And, you know, hopefully we can win the series tomorrow. All right, that is Elvis Andrews from the White Sox Clubhouse after scoring the game-winning run, driving in the game, tying RBI, and knocking in the go-ahead homer uh, in the fifth inning. So uh, great game from Elvis and great perspective from the clubhouse from a veteran. Sox uh, improved to, wow, and, and I mean, this is just a, a killer record, uh, 33 or 32 and 43. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Uh, White Sox baseball, baby. Uh, thank you to Vinny Duber for the video, and we will get to Vinny. Just after the break, want to let you know about Shader Ace. Take on the sun with Gilbert to last. Our friends at Shader Ace have you covered with the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades with at an affordable price. Shader Ace is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. They have durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shader Ace offers the most insane protection program in all of eyewear. Uh, every pair of sunglasses backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, it told us that they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. You can wear your Shader Ace with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase. And if you don't love your Shader Ace, you can exchange it for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for our listeners, Shader Ace is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code CHGO for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized shades. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Again, the code CHGO for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized shades over at ShadyRays.com. Also, got a Give a shout out to our friends over at FOCO. Um, they sent over a lovely TA and Southpaw bobblehead uh, for our set. So go show them some love at FOCO.com. That's F-O-C-O.com or click the link in the description below. And for online pre-sale items, you can use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. They have hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Get fitted in the best sports gear around over at FOCO.com. And since it's spring and baseball season, they have Aloha shirts, straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need for a game. So check out FOCO.com or click the link in the description below. For all non pre sale items, use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. Vinny Duber. Hey, look at that. Uh, using the Joey. It, Joey is might be in Wisconsin teaching kids uh, English or whatever he's doing. Um, <laughs> but at least we have his Welcome Vinny uh, segment. Hi, Vinny. You can follow Vinny on Twitter, at Vinny Duber. Uh, how you doing? And, uh, I mean, you mentioned, you know, you're sending in the, the video for yeah. Elvis Andres and Pedro Grafal. Um You mentioned that Pedro had a, a really good answer about Elvis. So we heard from Elvis. Uh, what did Pedro have to say about the final play there and uh, just Elvis Andres, uh and him in the eighth inning uh, knocking in the, the game, tying run and uh, scoring the game winner run? Yeah, so, I mean, on the play that everybody's talking about, obviously, the play that, that ends up deciding the contest here tonight, uh, Pedro said he hadn't seen it yet, uh, which I guess is not crazy because he was sitting in the dugout when it happened. So I, he saw it live, certainly, but uh, didn't see the replay Um and, and, you know, that's how that works. They get word from their from, from the staff elsewhere uh, on whether or not they should, you know, throw that challenge or ask for a review or something like that. And uh, it, it worked out for the White Sox. Uh, uh, we were asking Pedro, and I remember Pedro was a catching coach when he was with Kansas City. Uh, we were asking him a kind of about that rule, and, and, you know, he didn't want to go too deep on this specific play, but was was speculating perhaps that it had something to do with the setup and, and the way that uh, the catcher uh, for Texas was set up well before the ball even came in. So uh, that maybe has something to do with it. Um, you know, it sure looked to me like he was out, but I don't know the ins and outs of that rule. And, and you know, if you got your foot on home plate, maybe that right there is, is a violation of the rule. And that really looks like what was happening there. So, um, you know, uh, I, I think, I think uh, Dylan C said it best, uh, uh, paraphrasing, maybe, you know, we'll take it. We're, we're happy, happy it went uh, our way. The White Sox are happy it went their way. And uh, certainly happy the division is going their way too, because as Elvis was talking about, you know, 
they're, they're only four and a half games out of first place. The, the Twins don't want to win. So uh, that helps uh, the White Sox as uh, ridiculous as that record might be. You know, we keep pointing to last year and a team that was uh, massively disappointing at 500. This team's 11 games worse than that. And yet here they are, the division, uh, right in front of them for the taking uh, because nobody else seems to want it. Jekyll and Hyde nature of this offense is baffling to me because a guy from single A with a 70 RA can come up to face the White Sox and go six without any scoring runs. And Nathan Uvalde is one of the best pitchers in baseball, and the White Sox got to him today, and he didn't strike a lot of people out. What did Pedro say the approach was against Nathan, uh, and what did he say worked out for them and why they had success against one of the best in the game? You know, I... Elvis mentioned it a little bit there and, you know, the, a team like this and a pitcher like this comes to town and, and teams tend to get up for it. You know what I mean? Teams tend to, uh, you know, you, you, something you don't want to do if you're, if you're a team is play up and then play down to your competition. That is, is not a recipe for consistency, but you might be seeing it here with, with a really good Rangers team coming in and a really good pitcher, like you mentioned uh, in Evaldi on the Hill, and, and maybe they get a little psyched up for it. I mean, this lineup is not what the lineup was supposed to be, right? No T.A., no Yoan Moncada. Luis Robert Jr. did not start tonight's game. Uh, and yet, they, the, the guys they threw out there were able to, to do that damage. Like you said, Pedro was pleased uh, with uh, Eloy's home runs, breaking that streak of, uh, of solo shots. Uh, you know, he, was, he obviously was bothered by guys not getting on base in, for, in front of this. But he talked about the little things, and, and certainly that's true if you watch tonight's game. I mean, this win doesn't happen if Tim Anderson doesn't come up and ground out to the right side, right? I mean, like, it, it, those, those little things were present, and, um, you know, for him just to move those runners over for, for Elvis to take the extra base on the, on the single that scores the two runs it, that, that makes the difference in that inning twice over. So, um, you know, they, they played up to the Rangers. They played up to Evaldi tonight. They're going to phrase it as a, you know, a team that is resilient as a team that is, uh, you know, battling and fighting their way. And certainly that was the case this evening. Um, but Hey, they, they got amped up for a game against a really good pitcher and it, and it paid off. I think Steven kind of uh, blinked twice at Elvis's loss last an- answer, just talking about how I – mean, what was it specifically that had you looking sideways? He, he was – I wouldn't say I was looking sideways. He was kind of saying that, you know, this is the ty- type of thing that could spark them, beating a team that has one of the best offenses in baseball and had a good pitcher on the mound. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if – you are you know, you're still very far below 500. I don't know if this is one of those galvanizing wins or anything like that, but – I mean, I like the optimism. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the one thing. I mean, uh, Rick Hahn kind of talked about this in his presser yesterday. We played a little bit of it. Um, since that comeback uh, against the Rays on April 30th, if you kind of erase April, which you can't, you, can, <laughs> uh, you can't win a division title in April, but you sure can lose one. Um, they're 25 and 22. And, and they're above 500, which not a lot of teams in the AL Central can say. None of them can say that at the moment. So, I mean, maybe it is just just consistency and I I guess that is a frustrating answer because even in that same press conference Rick said uh, right around the deadline last year we were talking about we were missing some of that edge swagger confidence whatever adjective you want to drop when you're losing you're not going to have that edge attitude you see energy in the dugout you see a focus from the players you don't see that prove I'm better than you prove to justify the hype part uh, but that's tough when we're losing and guys start pressing Um, so I mean maybe a, a win like this kind of relieve some of that pressure and I think now they're at six wins uh, against uh, the playoff teams or the teams that were above 500 and I said you know their record before this was like seven and 24 against teams above 500 um, and now or teams outside of the AL Cent- Central and now they just got their six win I thought they were gonna go six and 12 um, so hey it's only up from here you know I mean if, if they're able to get one more win against the Rangers they've beaten what they're past season benchmark has been um, and they still have three more games against Boston to to try to add on to to more of that so I mean it hasn't been the cleanest of runs but you look out to a West Coast trip that was pretty wacky Um, that last game against the Dodgers went to extra innings and it really shouldn't have Um, you see a couple of those games in Seattle the 3-2 game uh, where Benintendi hits a home run and yet they still can't win that game Uh, the 5-1 game it really got out of hand late in that game but they were still in it Um, you know I mean 
again, maybe if the, the competition lets up here and they get Oakland, maybe they start molly whopping Oakland. I'm not sure. But it, maybe if, if they have bad pitchers, they're not going to be excited to face them. There, there's no <laughs> Nathan Eovaldi's in Oakland. Are we going to lose like three to Oakland? I'll, I'll say this. I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, listen, that's the kind of question that gets answered, that gets asked after a win like this, because, hey, this is a team that has struggled to find momentum. This is a team that has struggled to find excitement. This is a team that has struggled to find wins. And uh, when all those things happen at once and in exciting fashion in a way that has the music in the clubhouse blasting, um, that is a, a reasonable question to ask. Hey, did something feel different about today? Could you guys look at today and say, ooh, if we can replicate the feeling we had today, maybe, uh, you know, things can be different moving forward. Uh, But this is baseball, and you can't put a whole ton of stock into one game. We can, you know, we we have to wait a week or two weeks or a month to see if that good play comes, and then we can point back and say, hey, boy, remember when they got that uh, call overturned on the replay review and they beat the Rangers and everybody was happy and we asked if that was a turning point? And look, it turned out to be. Um, but you can't really determine that tonight. You, you know what I mean? And so um, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't put too much weight on them uh, doing, doing one day right when they've done so many wrong. Uh, you got to wait until uh, th- those good days pile up. Um, but that being said, this is showing a team – that has had all of this stuff in pretty short supply, what they are capable of doing, um, whether that turns into actual uh, a big bushel of wins moving forward, uh, we'll have to wait and find out. Vinny, I'm glad you brought up the productive out that Tim Anderson had in the eighth inning where he drove the ball to the second baseman to move the, um, the runners to second and third, set up that Elvis Andres RBI, two RBI single. Can I assume, or did Pedro after the game say, you know, since he played tonight, that Tim will probably be in there tomorrow morning or tomorrow night? I would not assume that. Uh, We're going to have to just wait and find that out because here's what it was. Basically, you know, they want to make sure that he can do everything that he needs to do. Uh, As of yesterday, Monday before the game, apparently all he was doing was running. Um, I watched him take batting practice today, so there's progress on that front. He obviously came in and hit in the game tonight, but if you noticed, he didn't go in and play defense. And you would think that after acquiring a lead, you would want your best defensive team on the field. Well, uh, Tim, Tim didn't go in there. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Elvis didn't slide over. They had to put Remillard in right field. Jake Berger was still at third base. There was perhaps some formation that you could have come up with with Tim Anderson in it that would have been their best defensive alignment. I'm not calling I'm not calling it anything. I'm not saying he won't be ready to field and throw tomorrow, but it might be a and might be an indication that he wasn't able to do that today and they'll see if tomorrow before the game he does reach that benchmark that would allow him to play. No, just looked we had a pregame uh before the game. That's uh, hence the name pregame. Um but we talked and brought up the tweets that you had. We did speculate that it would might be possible that Tim would be put on the IL. Now, him entering the game would make it harder to make it retroactive to a certain date. I guess it would be Sunday would be the last day that he played before this. Saturday. Can they, Saturday. Can they at least rule out him going to the IL now that, the, that he entered the game today? Well, I mean, it won't be retroactive if he does. Uh, you know what I mean? It would today is the last time he played i i think listen everybody always asks this they were asking it all last year they are asking it this year with certain guys they're asking it again with ta the the white Sox haven't put tim anderson on the il because they don't think he's going to miss 10 games that that's what it is they would rather have the guy who they think is one of their best players for seven games as opposed to zero over the next 10 and so if he only misses three then why did you just put him on the IL and and I'm not addressing that you specifically but I did see that a lot today and so I figured I would put that out there oh why don't they put him on the IL why don't they put him on the IL they're not putting him on the IL because they think he can play and contribute and help them before the end of that the, what would be the end of that 10 days I guess I was doing your le- your one of your least favorite things in speculating um and just more of like well hey if he did enter the game today would that mean even if he doesn't play tomorrow, they don't think the severity means injure list level that, hey, he can at least, 
you know, give it, give it a try here. Uh, you know, maybe there's just not enough info and we just have to wait until tomorrow and, and, and how he feels because I mean, Herb was even saying, you know, they have the off day on Thursday, so maybe he just sits out the Rangers series, he gets that off day on Thursday, and if he doesn't feel good on Friday, then he's retroactive to Saturday or whatever, um, but what, you know, nonetheless, I mean, you could even just give him that rest for the Rangers series, have that off day on Thursday, and then maybe he's ready to go Friday. Um, just wondering on the severity if there was an update on that, but it doesn't really sound like there was. There has been no indication that they've ever thought this was going to be something that would send him to the injured list. Um, Pedro yesterday even called, you know, described it as not a big deal or not something that was going to uh, be super impactful. So um, obviously it's caused him to miss three games in a row with the exception of the pinch hit appearance tonight. But the pinch hit appearance tonight would indicate that he can hit. Uh, we, we know that he can run because he said they were he was running yesterday. It I would imagine will come down to whether he can uh, play the play the outfield or play the infield rather uh, with the shoulder feeling the way that it is. And listen, I mean, you know, like like we always talk about, there's no there's no getting that stamina bar all the way full green, especially with Tim Anderson, who we've seen bothered by those uh, by the after effects of the knee injury uh, all the last how, what months now it seems. Um, and and this might just be a, a, a little baseball thing, guys. Just just because a guy um, is not well enough to play in three or four games in a row doesn't mean that it's so severe that he has to go on the injured list. And and I, I think that is what some people are still failing to uh, uh, see the middle ground there. But the, I get that, but also I get what fans are talking about because – this team, this organization has misused and mis, uh, messed up the IL. We saw all last year with uh, Luis Robert. The man could not play. He was swinging with one hand, but that's neither my question. My question is about Dylan Cease. Just like the offense goes against a top-notch pitcher in Nivaldi, he went against a top-notch offense in the Rangers and pretty much uh, did a, the job versus them, giving up a solo shot, I think, uh, to Adelise Garcia, but he was out there dealing today with nine strikeouts and limiting the walks to only two. What do you say that worked today, and how was he feeling after the game? He felt good. He, he was happy with his performance, and and you know what? He should be. Uh, this is a team that scores an awful lot of runs, and they didn't score an awful lot of runs against him. Uh, I think, you know, people yeah, – I don't want to call it recency bias, but this year Dylan Cease has not looked like he did last year. We'll put it that way. That's pretty obvious. But that being said, this is still the guy – who did that last year. And so, you know, I was tweeting uh, when the game started and I tweeted, man, what a great pitching matchup uh, tonight, you know, with, with Avaldi and Cease. And, and I think, you know, it, I, I paused for a moment because it's like, Oh, this is not really getting that kind of description because Dylan Cease came into the game with a, what, a, an ERA uh, almost at four and a half. So, um, uh, you know, it, it really is that, what have you done for me lately? But this is still Dylan Cease, that guy who was so dominant last year. Just because he hasn't been dominant uh, this year doesn't mean he's a different pitcher and doesn't mean that he is not capable of having nights like he did tonight against really good teams. Was this, you know, the greatest thing you've ever seen from Dylan Cease? No, but it was a very, very, very good start, and he outdueled the guy who, if the season ended today, would be very high in that Cy Young vote in, in Evaldi. Um, yeah, and if we want to go to his actual uh, stats here, um, he had a season high, oh, uh, six innings, two earned runs, uh, five hits allowed, nine Ks, two walks for Cease. And then uh, the stat cast metrics here for Dylan Cease, uh, a day where he throws a slider more than his forcing fastball. I know that was a, a trend that you were getting frustrated with, Herb, because uh, it's his best pitch. He should throw it uh, more than uh, his, his forcing fastball. He did today uh, through a slider 49, per, uh, 49 times, uh, through his forcing fastball 38 times. His knuckle curve 13 times, one of them went over the fence uh, from Adelis Garcia. Uh, but if you want to go to the next one, uh, season high, 24 whiffs uh, for Dylan Cease today, 19 on his slider, uh, 19 whiffs on 28 swings on that slider, 68% whiff rate, um, and 36 called strikes plus whiffs, and a called strike plus whiff percentage of 36%. 101 pitches, um, just I think the one complaint, or frustration, and I know it is a, a dangerous lineup here, Herb, uh, but it, it did feel like, you know, again, Dylan 
has a little bit of those nibbling issues. And, you know, I mean, only the sixth inning, we see a lot of, you know, discussion lately and no break on Monday uh, for this White Sox bullpen, um, you know, uh, that, you know, this bullpen's getting used a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it would have been nice to see a seventh inning. Maybe I'm getting a, a little bit uh, complainy here, but, you know, overall, a, a good start from Dylan. I mean, I think the bat that cost him extra innings or more uh, work was the Travis Jankowski at bat where he drew the walk. And that got him off his rhythm, and then you score, see Chankowski score later on. But yeah, I mean, I won't sneeze at six and in, six innings and two earned runs. But yeah, he's an ace, so you know, time for aces to step up, especially when the team had a bullpen day on Monday and to deliver a bit more. But what he gave today was more than enough. Keenan Middleton should have came in and did a little bit better job than he did today. Uh, Groot Santos, in his one inning, was really good, and his second inning wasn't as good, and Aaron Bummer, we saw what he gave up that single to Seager. But I have no problem with what he did today. Um, I'll take that every time if he gives a six and two earned. Yeah, and uh, let's take a break here, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, about uh, this game and just uh, where the White Sox sit with the AL Central and how weird it has been. Herb, are you ready for ComEd? Yeah, the Comet Energy Efficiency Program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities they serve, helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. Comet offers a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across the territory. And Comet offer also offers free facility assessments that can help find energy saving opportunities like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. How does that work, Sean? Well, an authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person or virtually and last approximately two hours. And within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they could start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and simple payback. If you own a business, do not wait. Get started saving money and energy today for energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz. Did you just say comed.com slash powering biz? Yes, and I'm glad you said it slower because I say things really, really fast. Uh, comed.com slash powering biz. Uh, Herb, what should Oh, I guess you're. Yeah, I am drinking it. It's down drinking? here. Well, look at that. It's like a magic trick. Yep. Where'd that beer come from? Down what here. are you drinking, Herb? Uh, 312 from our folks at Goose Island, Stephen. You can honk. You can honk. Oh, you, oh, you, you were lagering the honk. Yeah, I was you like, honk. I'm aware, honey. There we go. Uh, CHGO supported by bad. Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's beer since 1988. Herb's drinking their 312. Wheat Ale. They also have the Goose IPA, which is a six-time medal award winner at the Great American Beer Fest. They have the Tropical Beer Hug and uh, the uh, Beer Hug IPA series. Yep. Uh, I saw the the mixer. I think they got four flavors. Uh, the juicy one, which one I haven't seen in our fridge, but yeah. uh, I know they got the hazy one. They got the uh, tropical one. Yep. They got the neon one, neon, and they got yeah. the juicy one. Look at me. And they got the full pocket pills as well. So grab an ultra fresh brewery exclusive beer at Goose Island's original brew house on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park or from their tap room on Fulton Street in West Town. Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's Beer. Steven. Another honk, yeah. huh? Okay. Yeah, another honk. Right. Um, okay. Just keeping your under toes here. Uh, so, I mean, we talked about the AL Central. The Sox now have. 58 homers in their last 46 games. That's better. Which I, I'm, I'm happy about. And they're three games over 500 in their last, what, 47? I can't add. You're 25 and 22? 47? My question to you, gentlemen. Can the White Sox win the AL Central with 77 wins? No. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm going to say no. I would say no also. One of these teams is going to finally break out and win more games than they lose. I think the Cleveland Guardians are just dorming right now and are about to attack. So it's uh, vital for the White Sox to keep within them instead of Minnesota. This is the same thing that happened last year. Minnesota had a lead for a long time. And then Cleveland's like, okay, that's good. We're going away from everybody. Yeah, I know, but McKenzie's out now. Like, I mean, they're, they're no police sack anymore. Yeah, they're barely beating the Athletics. They just won three two and took that into the tenth. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I, I, I think this is the worst division ever. This really seems like this will be the worst division ever. I think the the worst 
division winner was the Padres in 05, 06, 07, that area. The Chase uh, uh, Headley area? era. Yeah, Chase Headley. Yeah, Chase Headley area. Uh, I was going to say Huntley. I feel like that's a quarterback. Uh, but uh, they went 82 and 80. Like, I, I, I think 77 and 85 might be a little bit of a stretch. But if the White Sox play a little bit over what they did last year, uh, just down the stretch here, and they're around 81 and 81, I feel like that could be division champion territory. Like, I, I, I think they can be sub-500 and win this division. See, this is the thing, though. Which is just disgusting. This is the thing, though. What we heard from Rick Hahn yesterday, he doesn't... It seems... Well, I'm interpreting, he doesn't seem that winning the AL Central means he's going for it or he's not trading players. So I could see him after this whole June is over. It's like, you know what? This team's not ready to go. We trade some players away. Can they still they can add still that? Win, but they can still win the AL Central. That's the thing. They like, can away. they still win the requisite <laughs> amount of games to win this AL Central? Yeah. I mean, you could do. He could have his cake and eat it too. Like, trade some players away. And then just be the same team and win the AL AL Central. I I get not adding, but I'm not sure. Like, I I know there was the report from uh, Bob Nightingale, and I don't know how true it is, of of saying several players are, uh, you know, wanting or or looking for a trade uh, from the White Sox but haven't uh, gone to the front office and requested that. I I, I really would be surprised if they, they sold the farm. I know I've been kind of advocating for it, but, again, like, you just win one game and you're four and a half games back. I mean, this is something that, I mean, we really didn't see until like April 15th and now it's coming back and they really aren't even on a roll. Like, I mean, Pedro said, I think two weeks ago after the Jake Berger grand slam, like just wait until they get hot. I'm still waiting. <laughs> and, and yet they're, 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 they're gaining ground in the division. I, I, I don't know. Um, how important is tomorrow? It's obviously Pride Night, uh, and the Rangers don't have a Pride Night. They're the only team in Major League Baseball without a Pride Night. Um, so that's important that, hey, at some point, the Rangers at least have to um, be at a Pride Night. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what do we make of this rubber match? How important is this to win this game? Because, what, possibly be three and a half games back. Yeah, I mean, you got uh, Michael Kopech going to the bump for the White Sox, and I think Martin Perez for the Rangers, so a lefty versus these White Sox. I expect uh, the White Sox to have that same mentality they had for Nathan Evaldi, even though Martin Perez isn't a top pitcher. He's got like a four and a half ERA this year with a lot of wins because the offense bails him out a plenty of times. But I think last year when Martin Perez, Martin Perez was pitching very well, the White Sox got to him. And so they got to take that mentality into what they had today of attacking Evaldi, especially those fastballs that he was throwing early in the game where Andrew Vaughn was attacking the high fastball, forcing fastball from Evaldi. Same thing with uh, Aloy with the home run. See a mistake, crush a mistake, and have that same mentality they had today because they hit balls hard. Even some of the foul balls they hit were kind of crushed. The Jake Berger foul ball that almost got to the fair pole there was crushed, and the Elvis Andres home run was crushed there. So I think it's very vital for them to win and to break the – streakless uh, a serious uh, losing streak they have going on for themselves right now and to beat the second best team in baseball or in the American League we have a huge confidence boost for all these guys it's like see we can play with these type of plays these type of teams we can battle versus their best pitcher and then another pitcher who was a top uh, free agent this year so why can't we go and do that this weekend versus Boston yeah, her last season versus uh, Martin Perez, the White Sox hammered him for seven runs and just five innings of work. Yeah, so twelve hits in that game too, just off of Perez. And they won, an, and they the Rangers won in extras. <laughs> Go White Sox! The White Sox are the new Angels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mike Trout hit seven home runs. Uh, <laughs> Berger took him deep. So uh, hey, there, there you go. Uh, we no one picked Elvis Andrews. No one picked uh, Aloy Jimenez. So uh, do you have an advocate for uh, click to pick here, Vinny? Uh, we had uh, Andrew Benatendi from you, Jake Berger, and Andrew Vaughn. And that, uh, this is why I think the segment just sucks. <laughs> it's, no, it's just a bad. It's segment. really not working. I, I mean, Benatendi had that slide. Is that a thing? Does that oh, get you? Does that, that is, make you hey. Pick? Damn it. It didn't <laughs> score. Um, but, yeah, hey, it was a cool it slide. Was a cool slide. It was it a cool-ass slide. It was better than Javi Bias. No, it was a cool slide. It was. It was a cool. All right. Cool slide for the win. Hashtag, right? hashtag Benny slide. Hashtag it's, Benny it's, slide. It's a thing now, guys. Yeah, it, it, and it you couldn't believe it, Vinny. Um, somebody at our office was, no, I knew this was, coming. was mad that... 
Benny had to put himself in that situation already. He's like, was he hustling out the box? And he wasn't. I, I went uh, back and looked at it. Old man Steven. So it took him just about 10 <laughs> seconds to go from home plate to second base, which isn't horrendous. But if you look back and watch it, he does a little spin out of the batter's box. It's a full 360 spin. Dogs it out of the box. Spin. It was a full 360 spin. I counted every degree. And then he, st- <laughs> he finally starts moving towards first base in a very slow pace. And then he starts running. So it shouldn't have been that close had he been running. Mercy. Um, right. We're gonna get. Yeah, we're I gonna get that. Steven. We're gonna get Steven a lawn chair, and uh, <laughs> and, and a nice hose. And every time any children walk by, he can spray them, uh, and and you know be angry at them for absolutely no reason. Well, if they're walking in front of my house at the right pace, the it's okay. They just gotta get a little bit gotta of hustle. a little giddy up in their step. <laughs> Pick those legs up, kids. Jesus. Get off my grass. <laughs> so yes, yeah, Sean when doesn't are you like going to Wisconsin. I'm not going. I'm not going to Wisconsin. Oh, I, I thought that was like you, a thing. Joey well, you don't like Wisconsin. That, you don't like that he doesn't hit the ball far. I don't like that he didn't run fast. So hey, Leo, let's beat up on Benny. Uh, they won, guys. Let's, Your let's, thing. Let's, let's, let's focus on that. Uh, Vinny, what is the vibe from the clubhouse tomorrow? On on tomorrow, uh, I don't know how important winning a series is, but I mean, I, you know, winning's important, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they want to win a series. They want to win games. Uh, you know, if you're going to ask me how important is tomorrow, it's it's. I don't know. It's as important as any other game is. It's it's June, and they're they need to win a whole ton of games before the end of the season. They need to win at least uh, you know at least what five more than the Twins. Uh, so uh, you know they've got a lot of winning to do if they're going to you know be a playoff team. If they're going to convince uh, you know the front office that they deserve to be uh, helped instead of uh, taken apart at the at the trade deadline. Um, so is tomorrow's game important from that standpoint? Yes, but is it more important than any other? No. <laughs> that's fair. Um, yeah. That's Vinny Duber. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer, uh, and you can read his latest piece up at allchgo.com talking about uh, or covering Rick Hahn's, uh latest uh, media scrum uh, where he talks about uh, what her brought up earlier about the quality of this team and uh, if they are contender level or not. Uh, that's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter at Ekron 23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. And I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. We will see you tomorrow for not only a post game, but a pregame. So you can join us at 630 for a pregame for Michael Kopech versus Martin Perez in the final game of the three game series between the Rangers and White Sox. And you can join us then after the game as well uh, to get the cover on the full series recap uh join us then we'll see you tomorrow uh, and, oh sorry um i i kind of i want to mention this I, I know it's a sour note and a weird note to end on but um d- before today's game off uh, and the white Sox put out the statement four fans were injured this evening in a hit and run incident outside guaranteed rate field prior to the start of tonight's chicago white Sox game uh, the injured were treated at the scene and transported to a local hospitals while the Illinois State Police and Chicago Police apprehended the suspect blocks away. Um, the Sox continued by saying our hearts go out to the four fans who were injured this evening, their families and friends, as well as the fans who witnessed the incident on their way to a baseball game. The Chicago White Sox organization expresses its appreciation to the Chicago Police Department, the Chicago Fire Department, the Illinois State state police to police and others uh including fans who responded to the incident and provided immediate care for the victims uh we echo those sentiments about uh those victims and the injured um and uh, yeah I'm sorry um uh, uh we echo those sentiments about the injured and the uh families who are affected there um and obviously a tough situation for uh the white Sox family to uh, be dealing with um, the super chats, um, Dougie saying, uh, hashtag nine more for Herb. Uh, appreciate that Dougie. And then, uh, Eli or Ellie saying, uh, crazy game. I was at, uh, the game with my brother. So, uh, great for, uh, Ellie, uh, making that trip over from, uh, Israel. So hopefully, uh, you enjoyed that, uh, White Sox win. Uh, we will talk to you tomorrow for a pregame at six thirty, and then the postgame following, uh, see you then. Go Sox.